Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and I have another alumni from Friday the 13th on the phone. I have David Kagan, and he played Sheriff Mike Garris in uh, Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. Hi, David. How you doing? Hi, hi. Good to talk to you. Yep, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. So I have about 10 questions or so. The first question I got is, uh, how did you get your start into acting? How did I get started in acting? Yes. Um, well, actually, my father uh, did a lot of amateur theater, community theater. And so as far, as long, as far back as I can remember, I would go and watch him rehearse. And he did all these plays that I were really terrific plays and he did a little bit professional work but I just fell in love with it and um, that was kind of part of the culture I grew up in my home uh, watching great uh, plays and, and uh, you know on television or going to plays so I just was always part of my life awesome. and um, my family loved to perform for one another that is to make each other laugh, to entertain one another, whatever. And so there was a little competition to see who could be the cleverest, most entertaining, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so what was your audition like for Friday the 13th, Part 6? Hmm. Well, uh, it, was, uh, it, it was good. In, in fact, it's kind of a funny... I mean, first of all, um, the, the lead... Uh, girl, a girl played my daughter, mm -hmm. um, had studied acting with me. Oh, okay. She had been a major, um, uh, I believe, a soap star. And, um, but I didn't know she was anything part of this at all. And there were several of us auditioning, and we, but we were reading with her. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I just was, uh, I took a lot of risks. I just really invested myself and, uh, mm -hmm. But it did make it a little easier, I think, for me because I knew her and she knew me. Right. Um, it's kind of funny because um, when I got home, uh, I was home for just a little while and I got this call from my agent. And my agent said, so, you know, how'd it go? <laughs> and I said, well, I, you know, I felt like it went pretty well. I, you know, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> and there was this pause and he said, well, you got the job. I nearly fell over. <laughs> it's a film, you know. I mean, albeit it's a lower budget film, but it's a film, right. and you, you know, to hear that quickly is is unbelievable. Yes, that's awesome. Um, so that that was. So I guess it went as well as I thought. <laughs> that is great. That is awesome. And you did an amazing job in the film. I like. Oh, you, no problem. You, your acting was just on point from the comedy aspects of it to the serious part of the movie. Like everything was just amazing. So, um, what was your most memorable moment while filming Friday the Thirteenth Part Six? Hmm. Oh gosh. Well, I mean, I, there's more than one. Yeah. But. Um, because I get to do all these things that are just sort of fun to do, but the one that I always remember, there's a there's a part in the movie where I'm at, you know, the camp where the murders are murders are happening, right. and there was a deputy. Um, I can't remember his name. Maybe you could help me. But there's a guy who who um, just before I encounter Jason. And I, something happens, I, I, I trip or something like okay, that. Okay, yes, uh, Officer Papas. Yeah. Michael so I, I, I fall, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I fall down and I, and my face is right next to his mangled, bloody, whatever, <laughs> horrible face. And I just automatically did this thing where I drew back. In other words, where I backed, right. I, I sort of, pulled myself back rather than stood up mm -hmm. and um you know that's i guess from some time of watching horror movies as i was growing up mm -hmm. and it was this opportunity to do something which is just so fun to do <laughs> exactly <laughs> and know that it's going to work on camera you know for the camera <laughs> so um um yeah that's that is one moment that was really memorable for me awesome um uh, I don't know. The first time when Tommy comes in 
and I and sitting in the chair, I'm dozing, and I jump up and pull my gun <laughs> out, or you know, or right. uh, with my daughter, and have the shotgun, and I say, Megan, get out of the car. There's this whole like whole car chase, and, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, or hit the cherries, it hits the noise in the cherries. I mean, there's just so it's amazing. All the, it's a long time ago I did this, but I'm remembering right. these lines. It's awesome. um, you know, but uh, it, it was it was just fun, right? And um, and Tom, uh, our director, uh, McLaughlin was so much fun to work with and very encouraging, and he was having fun. And uh, um, I don't know, we were I think we were all having a lot of fun. Right, that's awesome. So, how was Tommy McLaughlin as a director? Oh well, I mean. You know, in these interviews, when they do this, this is, I always laugh when I watch something because nobody's ever going to say anything bad. Right. <laughs> so right. You, you can forget about that. But the truth is, is it was it was just very, very good. It was fine. He was, he, he was, um, I think this was like a breakthrough experience for him. He got a lot right. of work after he did Friday the 13th. Right. I can attest that Tommy he, McLaughlin is actually a really, really nice guy. I interviewed him. Um, and he was he was really pleasant to interview as well. Yeah, so so uh, you know we as I say we were having fun. I think we were all all of us were excited to be able to get the parts that we got. Right. Um, I always uh, yeah you know this was I, doing a, a I had certain concerns about doing a a movie that was so violent. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, what was really revealing to me, uh, and I've met a lot of the fans cause I do go to conventions sometimes mm-hmm. and sign autographs and meet right. people. But that when I went to the movie, the first time even, mm-hmm. uh, the fans, the, you know, I could just tell they were just having a good time. Yeah. But they didn't take the violence seriously. It wasn't, it wasn't encouraging them. Right. To, to go out and be that way. They just were having a ball and they were yelling at the screen and making jokes <laughs> and they, they just having just laughing and just having the best time. And right. um, uh, when the movie was over and I went outside, I was leaving and some of the people who had seen the movie saw me. And, <laughs> you know, they couldn't believe their eyes because they just seen me on the screen. And, <laughs> oh my God, it's a sheriff, you know. And just people have been very, very truly very sweet very kind right i um i mean i was hiking once in the middle of nowhere and i was on a a, a trail all by myself and somebody was coming toward me i mean really in the middle of nowhere a hiking trail and uh in the angeles national forest and this guy as he got close to me he said oh my god you're you're the sheriff. <laughs> you just don't expect stuff like that. Right. I forget what your question was, but, but oh, Tom, about Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and I, from time to time, Tom and I have uh, gotten in touch with each other over the nice. years, uh, uh, talked with each other, or seen each other at an autograph signing or whatever. And um, I just, uh, very, he was very appreciative of what we all brought to the table mm-hmm. and he was encouraging and he made it um he had, he knew what he was doing right um and it's that's not easy mm-hmm. because it's lower budget it's fast uh you, you know you can't high, a larger budget movie you can sort of find your way as you're shooting and in yeah. this there isn't that kind of time exactly so so how was uh, it like working with uh, Tom Matthews and Jennifer Cook? Or how were they on set and everything? Well, th- I, it's funny. Tommy, uh, Tom, um, I saw him in an autograph signing <laughs> after not seeing him for a long time. And I just felt so much affection for him. I, I just, <laughs> it was just completely spontaneous. I just gave him this hug. And, right. and um, uh, so, you know, these people were just easy to work with. Uh, right. Um, they they wanted to do a good job and they cared and and uh, um, and they were having fun. They were just happy to be doing what they were doing, and so it was it was easy. Right. And Tom was I don't know how I Tom was really uh, it was really built. Mm-hmm. 
uh, you know, he worked out. <laughs> it's just like working with CJ. So I, I didn't have to worry about hurting him. Right. <laughs> you know, he could handle being um, accosted physically. Exactly. And, uh, and that, that made it easy. Exactly. I mean, especially with CJ. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you know, CJ with that scene where I'm, I, you know, I finally, you know, he, just before he kills me. <laughs> right. Speaking of CJ, and how I, was he as Jason? I'm bashing his head in whatever, you know. <laughs> there's, there's a funny story about that. But, if you, uh, but, but you know, at one point he just, you know, you think I'm getting going to get the upper hand here. And then he just, from a lying down position, just pushes me up, you know. Right. <laughs> I'm like a doll in his hands, you know. <laughs> he was, you want to tell us the story? Very strong. Yeah. Do you want to tell us the story about CJ when you were bashing his head to Matthew? Oh, it's just, no, it's just a funny thing. Those rocks that I'm beating, you know, hitting him on the head mm-hmm. with that rock was, uh, it was made of styrofoam. <laughs> so I'm not going to hurt him, you know? Right. But I have to make it like it's heavy and I have to make it like I'm hitting him, you know, and right. really bashing his head. And so in one take, um, there weren't that many takes. You know, we had there's a fan going, making wind and all this stuff. And I guess at a certain point that the rock is, you know, he I guess it's right when CJ grabs me and pushes me away and takes charge. Um, I must have, I, of course, dropped the rock. And the rock, because of the fans, uh, was blown across the frame right. of, that was being filmed. <laughs> you saw the rock <laughs> blowing by. <laughs> Because <laughs> made a styrofoam, it's not a real rock. <laughs> and uh, of course, they had to call cut and say, "What?" And I said, "What would happen?" He said, "Oh, the rock just blew by." <laughs> <laughs> so it's just kind of comical. That, you That's know, hilarious. Whatever. So how One was your movie things? How was how was your death scene filmed and prepped? I'm sorry. Say how was again? your death scene filmed and prepped? How how was that prepped? Yeah, how like how did they do the whole back cracking uh, thing? I had to do a lot of yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I know nobody believes me. No, you know I hate to tell the trick of how it was done, but I guess after all this time, it's okay. <laughs> um, there was a, a a second person lying down, so they built a, dug a deep a hole, okay. so that it was up to my waist, and then I straddled this. My I was standing in the hole, okay. and. There was a guy lying down with his legs behind me that you couldn't, you, you know. So, mm-hmm. well, I guess you could see it, but it looked like, okay, um, CJ is, you know, Jason's taking charge. and But then, then so I was able to just, he's bending me back, and I'm uh, able to just sort of lie down, you mm-hmm. know. And then they had their... I don't know their, their their celery or whatever that they had. But they make the sound effect of the right. of the back breaking, of bones breaking. Nice. So it was a kind of a clever gag. You yeah. know, there are different versions of the movie. With some of them, some of them they do not show the entire thing. Oh, okay, interesting. And did but, you know that? No, I didn't know that actually. I just got yeah, the yeah. They don't it. show. In other words, suddenly it's like quick motion. You're um um. He's lifting me up, and then suddenly I'm an, I'm um. Bent totally in half, and then others, and they show the whole thing, you know. Nice. And of course, that's much more intense for somebody to watch. Nice. And that's one of the funny things about getting autographs, because I had some very young people, or people who had been very young, when -hmm. they and I would, you know, interested. So I would say, you know, how old were you when they saw it? Oh, I was five. I said, you were five. Mm -hmm. How did they let you do that? He said, oh, they didn't know. My brother was watching with his friends, and I snuck in and. And watched it, kind of thing. You know, it's yeah. Very, the, I, the range and age of the fans yeah. is remarkable. I first saw it when I was about eight years old. When it was when VHS tapes were relevant, <laughs> I was pretty young My as well. God. Yep, yep. But it the, wasn't too intense. It what wasn't, did you think? I loved it. The first movie I saw was Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven at like four or five years old. And uh, and then I uh, and then I just watched them all from the beginning, and over the years I watched like one, two, three, all the way up through like I think like the most recent at the time was like maybe Jason uh, goes to hell or something like that. I don't even think Jason X was out yet. But yeah, um, I I've been watching since I was about four or five years old. I was really really young. <laughs> yep. 
No nightmares? I did, and I mean, as I was growing up, I would have, a, I, I had to go to fear therapy when I was, when I grew up, and then I got back into horror movies, and now I'm like, a, I'm interviewing all these cast and crew from horror franchises, and I own my own horror mm. production company, and we just made our first horror comedy film. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, like, it, it was a path. <laughs> it was a path. <laughs> I know you're interviewing me, but what's the what was the attraction? Um, I I just I lo- I think part six is my most favorite out of the franchise. It's it's just cleverly written. Um, your character comes off as, um, not as a bad guy, but as a concerned parent, and I know that from my parents because my dad's currently battling stage four uh, brain cancer, but my parents were always oh, overprotective of me. And my dad was given a lot, and me and my dad actually had a fight over him being overprotective of me. And uh, um, like a month before, a couple weeks before he was diagnosed, and then we're told he has uh, that uh, he has brain cancer. He had emergency surgery, and then he ended up having a stroke right after surgery. They gave him 24 hours to live. Here, he miraculously survived that, and they gave him a year and a half to survive. Almost four years later in September, he's still beating it. They said they don't know how he's doing it. The therapy, immunotherapies are working. He is over half, half the time that they actually originally gave him to live. And he's over half of that time span. He's he doubled it. Wow. wow. Yeah, he, he, yeah, so it, it's been a long journey. And he, uh, he um, just had an MRI, uh, was it last week? Um, and he, uh, and he's still stable. The doctor said, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. It's obviously working. Wow. Yep. Yep. I wrote two books on it and everything. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So th- the last question I got for you, um, is a two parter actually. Um, it's more about you. Um, do you have any projects that you would like to promote to our listeners and where can our listeners find you if they want to see what you are up to in the future? Well, I, um, you know, I kind of, it, it, I'm not pursuing any work, okay. and uh, it's the kind of business where I think if you don't pursue it, right. it um, it's f- f- pretty unlikely right. that. So, so I don't have anything. I mean, I, I, I just sort of, uh, you know, if somebody called me and said they wanted me to do something, I'd certainly be interested in listening and okay. and all of that. But um, um, so, you know, I did some some independent films up until I don't know uh, maybe gosh six years ago or something like that okay. um, and did some fun stuff but yeah I don't I don't have anything to, to promote and uh, okay. but uh, who knows Do you have like a website or anything or any social media that people can reach out to you at yeah I don't I don't okay. um, you know I just uh, I'm doing a lot of other things in my life now right um that that aren't related to that mm-hmm. uh so you know that's just the way it is you know yep. uh, um, but it's it's a good life i got a good uh, i do All have right. a terrific life and i and i have have had a lot of fun along the way and that's great and i mean you're you're be- like you, you have that iconic role of the sheriff in friday the 13th part six who has probably one of the best death scenes in the franchise so that's something to be proud about. <laughs> wow, that's great. I know people, you know, I still get, I get people, when I, especially if I go to a convention or, yep. you know, so once in a while somebody tries to, you know, email me. Um, but, uh, uh, and they'll say that, they'll talk about it. I'm surprised after all this time. But, yep. uh, well, that's yep. nice. Yes, exactly. Well, I thank you for your time, David. It was a pleasure talking to you. Same here. Same thank you here. so much. You, Good and you, luck. And, and, thank and, you. Uh, really, I, I appreciate all the fans that that, uh, awesome. that appreciate what I did and what we did and what Tom wrote. Because Tom, without the script, there's mm-hmm. nothing. And, exactly. Uh, and Tom McLaughlin had a really fun sense of humor. <laughs> he definitely did. Well, I thank you, David, and you stay safe. All right. All right, thank you. Bye.